Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is the Tribal Root Studio once again, and my name is Alina Zahir, uh, broadcasting from Ishaka, Abushin, Uganda, inside the Tribal Root uh, Studio. And today we have an important guest, a young brother from Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, this young brother, I've known him for quite some time, and as much as I know, he's very energetic. Uh, he's, he's a writer. He's a lawyer and he's a farmer. Uh, he may be so many other things that I, I haven't talked about. So I will allow him to introduce himself to our viewers. And um, uh, our viewers, wherever you're watching from, you are welcome to this uh, very show where we talk about uh, what's happening in different parts of the world and how we can learn from all the events that are happening, what we call geopolitics. So my brother, I would like to invite you to introduce yourself to our viewers tonight. Um, good morning viewers. My name is Lisa Zimba, a human rights activist from Kenya. Uh, and the situation, the situation in Crimea. Uh, my own point of view, I can I look at it as as, as America American expansionism, whereby they are trying to spread their influence in the eastern part of Europe just before Russia does it. Uh, it is also a projection of the of the of the of the Cold War, which 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 as they say officially ended in 1991. But the hostilities between the two nations, the two warring nations between Russia and America, is still visible today. Um, that's my first point. Second point is that uh, I look at it as former. USSR member countries, which were part of the, of the of the Greater Russia before its collapse in 1991, which they are trying to reunite back to the Greater Russia, at least for survival and economic benefits and security. Because if you look at it uh, uh, in more in more depth. The European tribes, out of the hundred, a hundred and twenty, around hundred and twenty Russian tribes who live within modern day Russia, are the same tribes who, who live in former USSR uh, countries, countries like Austria, Moldova, Romania, Hungary, all those small countries, slave countries. Thank you. Oh. But, uh, but one more point, please. Uh, if it will escalate to an all out war, at least uh, the whole world can see America is in someone else's dust. It is not Russia who is the aggressor towards uh, uh, neighboring nations in the west but it is america who is taking her aggression towards russia but so the mainstream media at least they can see they're all blaming 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 Vladimir putin they are blaming russians but uh, independent independent times can see very well who is the aggressor thank you so much um uh, why do you think Russia is important for America, the European Union, and NATO? What would be the interest of the three that I have mentioned in trying to aggress onto Russia? Um, let me begin with the NATO. North Atlantic Treaty Organization 
which is formed by 27 member states. Mm-hmm. States which are still part of the European Union. Mm-hmm. So, Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine has, uh, well, as far as I know, from the information I've gathered from different sources, Ukraine has not yet officially joined the NATO organization, military organization for self-defense. So, um, they are trying, the, the stakeholders are trying at least to first, to first I'm speculating that they are trying uh, to first get Ukraine into NATO and then being a signatory member will automatically exclude you from joining the greater Russia. So uh, we are we are looking at uh, different uh, events happening uh, in Russia, and uh, I think I think a few hours ago we we have heard that uh, President Putin is overseeing uh, military uh, nuclear drills, and uh, they are doing drills on nuclear weapons. What do you think? What do you think is the reason behind that? Should we have to worry, or is that just politics? Uh, during during war, there are so many opportunities to, to try to come in with their propaganda. Because from, from, from my own outlook, uh, most of us are usually economically motivated. Economically motivated. When there's no money, when there's no resources, really, really can there be more. So, uh, threatening to, 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 to detonate a nuclear weapon, I mean, would be foolish. From my own point of view, because we'll have destroyed both the people and the resources. And at last, at last, at, 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 at last, you get nothing out of it. Where well, is a threat? It's just a threat. It's just a threat. That's what you think. Boris well, Johnson, Boris Johnson expressed his fears, uh, saying that he really believes that Russia is going to attack Ukraine. The president, uh, President Joe Biden, I think, has really expressed his frustration. And we have seen uh, several other figures speaking out, uh, saying they really think Putin is going to attack uh, uh, Ukraine. Um, so why, why do you think we shouldn't have to trust um, those leaders? Why would they have to all express their fears frustrations about what is likely to happen in what everyone is calling uh, World War III. Uh, that's, that's hypocrisy. I call it, I call it hypocrisy because uh, the United Kingdom through the course of Boris Johnson uh, they first attacked Russia through, 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 uh, what do you call it? Through sanctions, economic sanctions. And then Russia was just responding to the sanctions. When they felt they were pushed to the end. So who attacked, who attacked the other part? I've never seen, I've never seen, I've never heard of any news or, or any facts where Russia has imposed any form of sanction. Was Britain, any EU country, member country, or America itself. It's always America 
pushing the sanctions towards towards are both really in perceived enemies. Okay. Um, what do you think? What do you think is the reason why America and NATO would like to have dominion over Ukraine? What is it about Ukraine that has all these nations putting their tentacles around Ukraine jealously? I beg, I beg your question again. Why are these nations interested in Ukraine? Why do they have military presence in Ukraine? Why are they trying to make sure Ukraine doesn't join Russia? Uh -huh. um, you see, as I said earlier, most of the tribes, both Christian, Islam, Islam like the, the Tatars, the Tatars of Ukraine, they live on both sides, on the side of Ukraine and on the western part of, of Russia. And from, a, from, from recent statistics, it was, it was revealed that an estimated 50% of Ukrainians would like to, to join the greater Russia. And we do have American puppets within Ukraine who would want American dominance and to, to maintain the independence of Ukraine. So, we, uh, between the two, whoever wins, between those wishing to join the greater Russia those wishing to maintain uh, Ukrainian independence, it will have effect on, on, on the, geopolitics, uh, the geopolitics of that whole region. It will be like a copycat phenomenon. It will, it will be like a copycat phenomenon. Once Ukraine begins to join Russia, Austria too will want to join Russia, Moldova will want to join Russia, Romania will want to join Russia and America will be the biggest loser here. They will not be having trading partners from that region. I see. So, yeah. do you really think there is a war coming? Uh, it's dangerous. No. Just to begin a war in such a militarily sophisticated world. It's not like in ancient times where, where, whereby if you wanted to crush, to crush, to crush an army of 10,000, you need other 10,000 armies from your side for you to get your But here we have machines, automatic machines. Just one man, one army officer, can crash hundreds of thousands in just one minute. It's very dangerous to start an all-out war. You, you can talk of an economic war, uh, a, a geopolitical war, but any, any military action, any aggressive military action will be dangerous to humanity. Well, I don't see it coming. I don't see it coming. Really? For me. Okay. I don't see it coming. Okay. Well, I it. yes, Aisa, thank you so much, Aisa Zemba. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are still with our brother, Aisa Zemba from Kenya. She, he, he is a lawyer, human rights activist. Uh, he's a writer. And you can check out his writings on the uh, Egret uh, blogspot. And he's also a farmer. And uh, you can trust, you can really trust that these are the young minds of Africa 
who are really trying to uh, make sense of what is happening in the world and also advise us as people on what to do, what to think and how to go about whatever we must do as leaders. So brother Aisa, do you really think Africa has anything to learn from whatever is happening between Russia and uh, the other greater nations of the West? Do you have Africa as anything to lose? Do you think Africa has anything to learn? Yes, at least, at least, uh, at least African, African countries. Okay, so far I've seen them, I've seen them learning about America's hypocrisy, the role America's foreign policy. Mm -hmm. uh, America's foreign policy was purposely formulated to ensure um, a continuous flow of resources from, 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 from the other countries, protection of mutual interest being from the other countries and the of powers, and checking of balance of power between nations without, um, to ensure to, to ensure that there's no rich nation overrunning any other any other nation however powerful it could be and then some of those uh, policies were formed under the principles of mutual respect mutual respect non-aggression and mutual benefits mm -hmm. if you look at uh, on, on the if you look at if you look on the non-aggression part america so far has invaded 58 independent sovereign nations mm -hmm. after 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 the second world war when it comes to mutual risk, to, to mutual benefit, whenever America is gaining something for the third, for the third world countries, people are dying of hunger. There is so much insufficiency. There is no infrastructure. The aid, the, the foreign aid, they, they do they do say they do provide. It, it, it doesn't even reach uh, the the intended. Uh, population. So, on non aggression, America has broken the law, the most aggressive nation here on earth. If you look at the mutual benefit, the benefit is not mutual, somehow imperialistic. Not even somehow, it's not an imperialistic. At least, in African countries, there will be, be a very big effect. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I hope we observe this at the, at the United Nations General Assembly mm -hmm. next, which will be coming. And you see our leader's comments. Okay. And on that, there have been complaints in the International Court of Justice, whereby uh, America is not a signatory, about revisiting and doing something about uh, human rights abuse, invasions, and interference of other sovereign nations' uh, domestic affairs. The conversation, the conversation between the victims and the abusers, the Western abusers, has become like a dialogue between a bad man and a dumb person. There's no communication in between. And since uh, human mind, human mind can never make, can can never bear, can never bear 
misery when people have gone to, as far as picking arms to fight America, any American puppet and her allies. As you have seen in Iran, as you have seen in Iraq, as you have seen in, in Afghanistan, as you've seen uh, happening in Mali, because the dialogue table automatically uh, is practically is it's, it's practically dysfunctional, it's biased, and there's no room for the victims to express themselves. So they've gone to the, to the, to the far right, big weapons, and fight American allies. Well, I'm not a fan of war, I'm not a fan of violence, but uh, you have to defend your integrity as a human being, by all means. Mm -hmm. Yes, at least after diplomatic talks fail, after resilience fail, patience is good limits. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Ayusa. And, uh... Uh, our viewers, we'd like to thank you for keeping up with us. This is the Tribal Root Studio. Uh, please remember to subscribe to this channel. Mm, there's a lot coming. Uh, we have also programs uh, in different uh, fields. This is geopolitics today, and we also have programs in health, agriculture, and uh, culture. Uh, we also have programs in innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, Tribal Root Studio is about empowering uh, people, especially on the African continent, to become central to solving most of the challenges we face and we have been facing. And our ideology is uh, that youth should be at the center of all of this, uh, while we also uh, uh, ensure and enforce that technology is, is the only way we shall change the narratives. Uh, we are so thrilled to have uh, young people like Aisa Zemba, a young man from Kenya, uh, trying to make sense of the situation between uh, the West and Russia currently, and what Africans, and uh, especially young Africans, can learn from. He's told us that we don't really need to be excited and to also uh, think that whatever is being said or being peddled in the media means so much. I think he means to say we already have so much to deal with and to pay attention to than to give our energy to the metrics and to propaganda uh, peddled by those in power. He's talked about a range of issues and I hope you have something to learn. If you really would like to participate and if you have a suggestion, you can go in the comment section, leave your comment there. If you'd like Aisa Zemba to come back on the show, please say so and we'll bring him back. Aisa Zemba, thank you for uh, your time today. And I would like you to give us the closing remarks. Uh, any closing remarks from uh, the Russia situation? It sounds like you are telling us that uh, what we learned from all of these is that America is doing it again as it has done before in different countries. Is that what you're saying? Yes, my closing remarks will be for America to kindly come to the table. Mm -hmm. Kindly come to the table. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Aisa. We meet again uh, whenever you can. We'll be ready and happy to have you once again. And I wish you the best, peace, love, and blessings. Greet our brothers and sisters in Kenya. We'll see you. <laughs>